Yeah, so it's like, okay, so that's actually a question I wanted to ask you, Tom. Um, that's a frequently asked question. Um, and it essentially boils down to, can a regular person, an average Joe, legally ship batteries? You know, like, I don't know, a few, like a hundred or a few hundred or, you know, a few boxes full of like um, batteries and stuff. So you can, but the thing is, the biggest, you know, you can do it, but the biggest issue you're going to have with is the phone number that you have to put on your package anytime you ship, uh, like battery, lithium batteries are considered a hazmat nine shipment. Mm -hmm. And on the label itself on the box, it says, for more information, please call and then you have to give a phone number. So if you if you give your cell phone number and the FAA calls that number because they have questions about the package, if you don't answer that call the first time, you get a seventy-five thousand dollar fine. So even if you're just a regular around, person, like just some average Joe's just shipping one little box. Yeah, I mean you're rolling the dice because the the regulations are so strict. Like they're real, it's they're really bad. Um, there's like so many other different things you can ship that, like, are just less regulated that will probably be a lot more dangerous. No. Um, batteries right now, like you have to have, you have to pay a service. Uh, off the top of my head, I forget what it's called, but I think it's um, crap. It's if you search like lithium ion uh, battery monitor, like phone number monitoring, it's a company and you pay them like 7000 for the year and they give you a phone number and that's the phone number that you put on the packages. Mm -hmm. So if the FAA or uh, the IATA, they give you that number of phone call, they guarantee that they'll answer it. And if they don't, then they'll pay the $75,000 fine. Wow. What about, uh, so what are the other things that people would have to get? Just to, because I'm like, when I looked at it, right, I was like, okay, so they need this little sticker, they need that other little sticker, and I thought, ah, I, I can get that. So I went and printed yeah. it and put it on the thing, and then I, I shipped my packages through UPS, and then they came back. And then they were like, oh, no, no, well, yeah, you got that one and this one, but it was like, from what I remember, it was like I got two stickers out of, like, a list of like 16 things that I had to do and like forms that I had to fill and stuff. And I thought, oh crap, like you could do it, but it's like, like I, I walked away from it like thinking like it's virtually impossible. Like for the average Joe's so much work, you have to get like certifications for some stuff, right? To be able to package it right and stuff. And I, so that's my impression. That's why I'm asking you like if the average person can like, can't sh yeah. legally well, ship them. To do it legally, you have, there's a, a company I believe is called like Lion Technologies, and you can you can pay to get IATA certified. You have to get, uh, it's like IATA and DOT for hazmat. So you have to do that once a year, and then you have to do the IATA thing twice a year. Um, and it constantly changes. Like the problem is every six months, either FedEx or UPS or USPS changes their rules. And if you're not on top of it, then the, like you're really, you're rolling the dice so much that like it took us a good three to six months and a lot of money just to be able to ship these batteries. And, um, and you know, we, we got in trouble uh, back when we first started and like we were really lucky not to get like fined out of business for it um so you know you're rolling the dice like if you think you're good with you know just two stickers on a box you know you got another thing coming there's so much it's so in depth that like i can't even i'm afraid to give advice to people on how to ship because by the time i give them that advice the, the rules might change it might have changed yeah, yeah 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 so that was that was the uh the impression that i got it's like yeah you can do it like if you're tom <laughs> You know, or one of these battery recyclers that is going to like be shipping every day, you can pay all their certifications and the, all the right packaging materials and all these other nonsense, right? But for
for the average person to be able to ship one little or two packages, it's like virtually impossible, I thought. Like, and so that's, that's what I tell people, you know, but I'm like, I don't know if I'm being too harsh. I don't know if I'm being too negative. Let me ask someone that knows, you know, and that's why, you know, that's why I'm posing the question to you. <laughs> yeah, and like what's funny, like I'm not even, like I'm not even supposed to be shipping these because like I didn't go through all the training. Like I paid for my brother and our other employee, uh, Troy, to get all this stuff done. And it was like a pretty long uh, class. And they have to, you know, update it all the time. And um, also like, we're lucky enough that we ship in enough volume that FedEx will actually send their hazmat rent to us. Because I'll just keep calling them. Like, if we get some new battery in, and I don't know what the rules or the regulations are, I'll tell them, like, you guys need to send somebody out here um, because, you know, I, I, we don't know how to ship these, and we want to make sure we get it done right. Yeah. But usually when you call FedEx, they have a, you know, they have something where you can get transferred to their hazmat team. But then they'll, they won't even know. Like, like, they don't know what kind of battery you have. It's hard to explain to them what it is. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just lucky enough to have access to the hazmat, you know, people. Like, they'll, they'll come out and visit us. Oh, and, yeah. And then, so that, that saves us a lot. Yeah. So that, that allows you to ship. But the average person, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard. Is there any questions related to uh, shipping from our viewers? Uh, yeah, also, we have like a hazmat contract that we signed too. So that's another thing you got to get done for FedEx. And then uh, that ties into our ship station software. So we have everything we ship has to get shipped through ship station because that's where we can select whether or not it's a, it's a class nine hazmat shipment or not. But yeah, I mean it sucks. Like there's a couple, uh, there's a couple fires, and they regulated the crap out of it to where there was a period where I thought that our business, the way it is, wouldn't be able to continue just because I didn't know if we could ship it legally. Uh, like yeah, you yeah. can sneak, you can sneak it in. Like there's there's a lot of people shipping batteries. Yeah, and, I I did that. I I snuck some into Puerto Rico to to Javier, but it's like you're taking a risk. Yeah, yeah. The dice. and the more you do it, like right yeah. now, like the way it is, is the FAA, I believe it is, they they are incentivized to find these packages that are, you know, so they're opening up packages all the time. Wow. And if that one's yours and it's not right, you know, like if your box doesn't say UN on it and it's yeah. not a certified box, or if that not like if that's just like a random UN number, then they're gonna know because they're gonna type in their system and everything. Everything has to match. Um, yeah. So it's it's just risky. I mean, I would, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like sometimes maybe the fines are worth it if you have like a one in a you know ten thousand chance. Yeah. But, you know that one time, like if you're not willing to. If you're not a lucky person. Yeah. yeah <laughs> they'll they'll fine you like seventy five thousand dollars, and <laughs> and they could send you to jail. They could send you to jail for up to five years. Yeah. So, so it's a risk. It's so a risk. If you, even, even if you do get caught, you're going to have to hire a lawyer and then you'll get litigated to death just to fight it, you know? So it's like, man, I don't know. It, it, it sucks. And I hope, yeah. I hope it changes soon. Like, I hope they come out with some sort of packaging that is almost like a, like a pouch, you know, that's meant for batteries so that we can ship them. And that would do away with a lot of all the, you know, all the, what do they call it? Like the white tape, you know? Yeah. The red tape. The red tape. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a 10 minute piece of a much larger, longer uh, live stream that I do on Twitch. And for those of you who don't know, the reason why I do that on Twitch is because I'm temporarily not able to do live streams here on YouTube, right? So until that changes, I'm gonna be regularly doing live streams over there. If you feel or are interested in watching the full thing, click on the Twitch logo at the end of this video. If not, you can just see the highlights here on my channel whenever I get to upload them. Anyways, thank you for all the support. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye. I'm back at EV West, and today we have a special guest. Yeah, I can tell you that's yeah. true. But I saw the beginning of it. I <laughs> yeah, and I got that rare pack in the carving. We're back at EV West. Yes, here we are. What do you guys have? 
with new to offer? Well, we've got uh, one Jay Leno here oh, today. Oh, really? Filming nice. um, for Jay Leno's Garage. And uh, we got a couple of cool projects going. Yeah. Yeah, the Beamer just got finished up. We got a Beamer. 